Ford Model T Armoured Scout Car of 1914. The Model T proved to be an outstanding scout and light armoured car, remaining in action long after other large and more powerful armoured cars had broken down. There were two types of car built. The most numerous type used the basic Model T and was employed as a scout car. This was deployed mainly in the Middle East, in countries such as Egypt and Palestine. The other type of car was a fully armoured version of the Model T and was used mostly in Russia and in the Caucasus. The scout car had a crew of two or three in most of these. The machine gun was mounted in front of the car in width with the gunner sitting next to the driver in some versions a heavy machine gun was mounted on a flatbed at the rear of the car. These vehicles had no armour protection for the crew and no weather protection. Whilst the machine gun had very little traverse in and none to the rear, nevertheless due to its light weight and good reliability, this vehicle proved to be well liked by the men who used it. The American army used several in Mexico and the Australians used them in Palestine and in Australia as they provided very good at covering large areas of dry dusty ground. Now I never knew that about Australia. The second car was developed by the British for the war in Russia and designed by the Royal Navy who had considerable experience with armoured cars. These vehicles were to replace a number of Lanchester armoured cars that had been damaged en route to Russia as they were. All that was available at the time, armour plate was placed around the engine and rear flatbed. The driver's cab was armoured except for the top, which was canvas covered. And the Maxim machine gun was mounted on a pedestal mount on the rear flatbed with 9mm of armour with a 9mm arm shield fitted to it. There was no forward field of fire for the machine gun due to the driver's cab. These cars were, rid were ridiculed on arrival in Russia but soon proved to be far better than expected in service. Stats Country USA Entered service 1914. I'd love to know how long they were in service. Crew 2. Weight 10 CWT. Length 11 feet 3 inches. Height 5 feet 1 inch. Width 4 feet 4 inches. Main armament. Range 150 miles. I'm amazed how them armoured cabs worked. And the reason is because I have I have no idea how the driver gets in unless he gets in via the normal door, but I can't see that on any of the pictures. Plus, I'm amazed how it's just a box. It doesn't even go, you know, straight across to the other door. Quite uh, fascinating, me to be honest. So we have a few books. One was originally published in 1920. You can actually get the original for £100 with the MT in Mesopotamia, which is of course, which was of course Iraq. And they loved the Ford vans out there because they were so durable and light, they could be manhandled and they could just glide over the soft sand and they absolutely loved them. They had over 200 serving out there with the transport companies. It's a fascinating read. It has photos i looking at the quality there the original photos just shrunk and i believe this was the first military book to include photos from the actual location to tell to show the reader where the places were what they looked like of course what the vehicles were like and they even had floating workshops built on barges of course for the Euphrates and the Tigerus. Quite uh, amazing stuff what they had out there in my opinion. So we have this book and this is about the unarmoured scout cars and I'm sure this is a fascinating read. I haven't got the book yet but I'm definitely going to get it for Christmas. 
and I've seen pictures of these cars in classic military vehicles throughout the years where all they've had is a chassis, the engine, a couple of seats and a machine gun. Just fascinating how they patrolled around these areas. But in this book, it says they weren't just used for scouting. They were used, of course, for reconnaissance and general survey work. So I wouldn't mind knowing the story about that and possibly I'd bring it to you in the future. Well, unfortunately, as you can hear, I still have the cold. And unfortunately, it's now reflected on the videos. Uh, I'm not too happy about that. You never know, maybe in the future I might bring you more videos on this fascinating subject because it's definitely opened my eyes and uh, hopefully once we get the book sometime say in January we can then bring you a proper video on what these cars did as I said not just went out there to do patrols into the desert and patrol the towns but also general survey work and I imagine when they said general survey work they mean road surveys, um, railway surveys, so yeah I'd like to uh, find out a lot more about that because I know that in America they used to have the wooden roads that went through the deserts so it's probably the same in these Middle Eastern countries so we will have to see and I'm looking forward to it so have a good one and one quick thing before I get comments and ridiculed about it when I said I didn't know that about Australia I clearly meant I didn't know that they had the cars out there. Not that I didn't know that it was dusty, because I have a good few friends who live out there.